Telcom Business, behind South African businesses drive to thrive. The latest results show that the number of SMEs rose by 41,000 in 2021 compared to the third quarter of 2022. And despite the decline in employment, we continue to cheer small businesses across the country, showcasing them right here on the Entrepreneurial SME with me, Rem Smabote. In this episode, I'm joined by the founder of Basani Cleaners, Macmillan Masoka, as he shares his journey of failure and success. Let's take a look at this first. <laughs> Uh, my name is Macmillan Masoka. I am the founder and owner of Basan Cleaners. I'm originally from a small town called Bretts in the northwest. Very small village with about 10 houses. The business has been operating for six years. We started in 2017, so we will soon be on our 10th year. Basan Cleaners is a cleaning company and a media company as well. So what we essentially do is we do upholstery cleaning, uh, we do contract cleaning for companies, but also we do TV production. Um, a friend of mine uh, started a cleaning business first, and then he told me that, listen man, um, with your personality and the type of network that you have, you can make this into a success. Why don't you open one? I was a banker at the time, and I started cleaning. So he, he showed me how to do the work, and I started cleaning while I worked. So I would go to work in my suits. After work, I would go and clean for my colleagues. I didn't know much about cleaning until um, Glocks opened the business until he showed me the business, but I think this was, because I had had many other businesses before that had failed, but I believe that this was for me. You know, I had all those businesses, they failed, then I went to Vets Business School, and when I opened this one, I came with a better mentality as well. I think, um, sure, the biggest challenges I've encountered, I mean, I am HR, I'm marketing, uh, I clean sometimes if it's too busy. I, I do everything. So being the one person who does everything can be very challenging. Uh, you sleep less. And I mean, we, we are busy. Meg, good to see you. By the way, congratulations, you've made me dress down. I'm always wearing a jacket <laughs> here. It tells you the power of an entrepreneur, what it can do to you. You and I are not strangers. Welcome. I know your story. I've seen what you've gone through. Many people know, but some don't know. Yes. What has it kept you going after all the failures and the adventures and the stresses and the hair that's gone? <laughs> thank you for having me. And thank you for recommending me to be here. Uh, we are not strangers. Um, I've, I mean, we, we did an interview once. Um, but for me, what has kept me going is you know, knowing that I'm an entrepreneur and nothing else. Um, if this fails, I mean, all those failures have taught me that if this fails, I pick up from where I left off and I carry on. So even when it's tough, I know I need to be an employer and it's a responsibility. But moving from a banker, you know, by, by nature, and I could be wrong, but I have dealt with bankers, they're conservative people. Yes. And you, you know, you, you would leave your work as a banker to go yeah. A gig and go back and wear a suit again. How would you have been brave enough to move from that conservative environment to the gig environment? I think I was scared every time, but it's how I'm built, right? Um, I, I've never understood how my mind works because, I mean, I'd be sitting in a job where I'm comfortable, I'm earning a salary, but my spirit would say you have to move on. So but was there any inspiration from being in the financial sector? Did you see other successes and think, maybe, just maybe? No, because, I mean, I, this is, for me, it's just taking over from where my mother left off because she was an informal business owner. Mm -hmm. So it's all I knew growing up. 
Uh, so it was just, you know, picking up the baton um, and carrying on from where she left off. So it wasn't about seeing other because I wasn't, I have, I had not been exposed to other successful black business people. It's just, it's what I saw growing up and I just took over from where she left off. What didn't you expect? You know, we can always talk about yes. what we expect when we go in. What is it that you saw that you never expected? I I think with this business specifically, I did not, because I had lost over and over again, I did not expect to win. I just continued to do what I Why? was I mean, born to, so <laughs> to you do. Do you have lost so many times and you keep on going back? <laughs> I kept on going back. I don't get it either. But I, I didn't expect the win. And I didn't expect to the win to happen so suddenly. I mean, from the time the cleaning company started, we just started winning. You know, uh, from day one, um, we just started doing What do you well. attribute that to? Sure. I think um, my clients moved with me from each and every business that I've had, right? So when we got to this one, um, it, it became easier because people, everyone needs to clean. Everyone cleans sometimes. So when I had those clients that have moved with me from every business support me, it made it easier for other people to also jump in and support. It may sound obvious, but yeah. I think there is a lesson that yes. you need to share about clients moving with you from one venture to another, and the ventures are not even necessarily related. Yes. Um, people buy you. You know, it doesn't matter what business you have. Um, there are thousands of other cleaning companies, but they keep on choosing me. So it has nothing to do with pricing people choose you. But in some of the ventures that failed, and you yes. could pick one, Yes. what is, I mean, there were pitfalls, right? Yes. Those pitfalls would have maybe made you go home and think, yes. dust off my suit, go back to the desk and do Ye the yes. work. I mean, that, what is that one pitfall that kept on making you feel, maybe I shouldn't? Um, research. I think I did not have the l business, und the understanding. I did not have the language as well. So, I had all these businesses, and that's what kills a lot of um, informal businesses or SMMEs as well. Uh, not understanding the business and not having the right systems in place. So that's why I had to go back to school. I had to go to Vets Business School and uh, so that I could learn and understand that you have to have systems in place for your business to survive. Not every one of us can afford to face business school to go into <laughs> the systems <laughs> right and the research right. What but do we do in the interim? YouTube. Everything is on YouTube. Yeah. Everything is on Google. Things are easier now than they were in the past. So you just need to just... So we should never underestimate the value of research. That's Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's take a break. We'll be back shortly. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.